What's happening, Sundial traders and investors? It's Rod with Power Group. Welcome back on The Pursuit of Wealth. It is Thursday, April 14th. I hope you're well today. And in today's short video, we're going to be discussing the stock Sundial, ticker symbol SNDL. Uh, we're going to go over some news and events, also going to do some technical analysis, my thoughts and opinions on the stock in the weeks and days and months ahead. Uh, before we get to it though, and if you're a Sundial fan, make sure to smash the like. It helps uh, support the channel and uh, get the video to as many people as possible. Tick the bell, you'll be notified on any future updates. We're gonna take a look at the delay in earnings here first. And then, uh, like I said, gonna go over a few more uh, news articles and then uh, we'll go into some technical analysis. Reminder that the market is closed tomorrow. So we were expecting earnings today uh, at some point and, and ended up getting delayed until the 29th of April or before. Uh, so we'll wanna see official confirmation from Sundial, but it has been delayed until uh, April 29th. But in terms of estimates, we were estimating, the analysts were estimating negative 0.0033 for EPS, earnings per share, and the revenue estimates are coming in at 28.01 million. So that's a huge increase uh, from, last from last quarter. The revenue came in at 14.37 versus estimated 16.48. So they did miss slightly there by a couple million. They did beat on EPS, so we'll see if this trend continues, but they are expecting, the analysts uh, are expecting a lot higher revenue uh, coming into this quarter. So Sundial Growers announces filing of annual report by April 29th. So this is official confirmation from Sundial and provides bi-weekly MCTO status update. I'm not gonna go into this entire article, um, just out of an effort of time to try to keep this video as short as possible. Uh, the principal reason for the delay though is that significant amount of additional work and in-depth procedures required to be performed by the company and its external auditor as 2021 fiscal year, uh, that the company is required to have an auditor attestation report as its internal control over the financial reporting under section 404B of the, yeah, go, goes on just to basically say that um, they're gonna be delayed due to the auditor. Uh, a lot of that has to do with, in my opinion, let me know in the comments if you agree with me, but they finally closed the purchase of Alcana, uh, which is the, uh, the liquor retailer and also the MJ retailer. Uh, so they're getting, their big, Sundial's got a pretty different business model, right? They're really focused on Canadian retail and Canadian retail, not just in MJ, but also in alcohol now, and uh, also a manufacturing company as well, but they're starting to focus more on the retail side uh, side of things, and they also have uh, Inner Spirit Holdings as well. So that's, uh, they're a lot different compared to like say Tilray. Tilray does have a, uh, a division of alcohol, uh, but they're not so much into the retail side. Uh, but then you got, you know, uh, Hexo, which is completely different from that, who is not into retail at all. They're just a manufacturing and a MJ products company, right? So Sundial is completely different. I think they all have places in portfolios personally. Um, I get a lot of tribalism in the sector, but I try to stay away from that. Uh, tribalism is not good for anybody. And I'm, I'm just a realist. Let me know in the comments if you um, agree with me, disagree with me. I always love thoughtful discourse. So taking a look at the uh, the purchase, I'm not going to go into that, but just taking a look at at this finalization that's likely potentially some of the reason why this got delayed. This is just a lot of accounting and, um, you know, uh, different things to sort out leading into that, right? Uh, lawyers and accountants, things like that have to get in line. Also another new Sundial, uh, Sundial growers to participate in the Benzinga Cannabis Capital Conference. And that will be on April 20th. So 420 at um, Fountain Blow, Fountain Blow, Miami Beach. Fountain Blow, okay. Let's be French. <laughs> House lawmakers pitch bipartisan bill to ready US for inevitable MJ legalization. I love it. I've always been saying it's just a matter of when, not if. And again, not gonna go into this article. I'll put the links for all of these in the description below if you do wanna go into them in depth. Uh, but like I said, at an effort of time, gonna move on to try to keep this video as short as possible. But three congressional lawmakers, including a Republican leader on the Congressional Cannabis Caucus, introduced a bipartisan bill Thursday to prepare for the federal government uh, for the inevitable and end to MJ prohibition. The legislation would create a publicly transparent process for the federal government to develop a regulatory and revenue framework that would be enacted if and when the 85-year-old prohibition on MJ ends and the plan is effectively legalized. So again, not going to go into that whole that whole spiel, but you can check out the link in the description below for the entirety of that article. Uh, but this is great. We know we have uh, Amazon, we have Apple backing federal legalization, and it's just there's there's more and more talks. We know that they kind of put it on the back burner with the C19 and geopolitical events, but it seems like the the amount of actual MJ news that has been coming out lately and just 
overall progress and sentiment shift that we've been seeing we, hasn't really been reflecting in the share price, mind you. Uh, but again, it, we're starting to see this 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 narrative change. And I think the next couple of months, uh, once we see crypto top out and tech stocks top out, uh, top out, I think that's when we're go going to see that that rotation and that shift and that focus as crypto and the broader market and big tech enters a bear market, I believe that MJ is going to enter a, a bull market. So we'll take a look at, speaking of the price, we'll take a look at the chart here now. Uh, we did have a huge move, right, on SNDL leading into the earnings. So that was a little bit of a, a, a cause for concern, right? Because leading into earnings, and mind you, we didn't know when earnings were going to be and they get delayed, uh, that type of thing. But 100% into earnings, you know that there was going to be a significant pullback, right, with earnings just around the corner. Uh, obviously, people were going to want to de-risk, and this came after uh, we had the huge pump in the sector, right? Uh, after we we had just overall, like I said, that progress on legalization, uh, Tilray came out with earnings, and the whole sector just completely caught fire, right? More so the LPs than, uh, than, than MSOs. And again, that's because of LPs being on NASDAQ and the NICE, right, on U.S. major exchanges. So for comparison's sake, uh, sake uh, Tilray had $2 billion traded in one day. It was the highest volume. I think it was two point, almost $2.5 billion traded in one day. And for comparison's sake, uh, truly only had $12.5 million or something like that traded that day. So $12 million compared to $2.5 billion, there's a huge difference, right? So we had that huge move up of about 100% on Sundial, and that was in eight trading days, so 10 days total. And we had a higher low every single candle for the entirety of that move. So for nine trading days in a row, it was a higher low every single candle. So when we have a pattern like that, you have to ask yourself, well, when are we gonna pull back from here, right? It's only a matter of time. And that's what they typically do when we're, we're nearing a bottom and we're so beaten down and oversold. That's usually we see a massive short squeeze and just market makers take full advantage of retail uh, and, and we see these explosive moves up, right? So we came off of daily oversold. I believe we were weekly oversold as well, but we had that huge move and we went straight into daily overbought, right? We got up into the, the, the 80s there on the RSIs, uh, on the RSI in the 80s. So not having not consolidated in nine trading days in a row, you have to wonder when, when are we gonna start pulling back? So this was a clear, a clear setup, right? As soon as we break that pattern, the higher low every single day, then it was clear to get to, to sell your position. Again, this isn't financial advice. This is for entertainment purposes only in my, my thoughts, but this is what I would have done. Um, I personally don't have a position, full disclosure in SNDL at the moment, um, just not completely sold on their business idea at the moment, but I know there's a lot of people in our group in power group that are, are interested in it. And uh, I know there's a lot of retail investor intention as well. So I wanted to come out and do a video, but just give you full full disclosure that this is a complete unbiased opinion. I do think that it, uh, I guess I would have it in as part of my uh, ETF, uh, but that was the, the most exposure I have. I, I probably will look to add it eventually, but again, just not comfortable holding it through earnings. And we're in a daily downtrend. Uh, we did confirm weekly uptrends though, but we know that the whole sector needed to confirm weekly uptrends, MSOS, the ETF, HMMJ, Tilray, all not even close to start to confirming a weekly uptrend, right? So that's why I'm just not interested yet. I may take a position uh, once we start to confirm weekly uptrends, but this isn't a name that, you know, I've got FOMO on uh, whatsoever. I do think that they're going to have some troubles with their with their Alcana business. I, there's rumors that there was a lot of debt from that, uh, but, but not just that. You know, it's a completely different business model compared to other LPs, right? They're into alcohol sales as well, and it, it's not really the the same thing, right? I mean, it can be good. It has its pros and cons just like anything, but you know, that, that sector, the alcohol sector is, doesn't really have any growth, right? If anything, it's shrinking and I'm just not hundred percent sold. Again, I'm always open to thoughts and discourse. So let me know in the comments below um, if you agree with me, disagree with me, and then tell me why you agree or disagree, right? It's always, it's always great. I'm willing to be persuaded and, and to hear the other side of the coin, right? I'm just not completely sold on it myself. But we did see an EMA 12 and 26 bear cross as well. That was another indication. Once we lost EMA 12 as support, that was another indication that, okay, we're likely going down to test EMA 26 around 60 cents. And then we had these EMAs crossing bearish. It was, there was just so many warning signs, right? We still didn't have weekly uptrends across the sector. 
But if I take a look at the Fibonacci retracement here, we, we lost the, the 0.5, then we tested the 0.618, the golden, the golden pocket, the 618 retracement, and then we lost that, and then we came back down and tested uh, about 55 cents support there, which was also the 786 retracement. And then we came back, rejected at the EMAs, and we had the golden pocket of the 618 fib rate there as well. And here we are back below, closing below the 786. This isn't looking good at all. And SPY, the S&P 500, had a bad close today, a bearish close. And we know we've been fairly correlated to the broader market. So if that's the case, I could see us potentially pulling back to that 50 cent area into, uh, into next week. Again, the market is closed tomorrow. But once we lost this higher low pattern, if you would have just exited once we lost the low of the previous daily candle, there was nine days in a row where we had a new higher low. So if you just said, okay, very simple statement. If we lose the low of the previous day, I'm out. Uh, I'm gonna, especially leading into earnings and this much of a move, you could have exited. When did we lose it? On this candle right here. See this higher low pattern broke once we lost that low, that low there at 71 point, uh, 0 0.7117. So once we lost that, had you have exited there and set a stop just below, that would have saved you 25% worth of downside. Again, this is just my opinions. Again, I don't have any, I'm not telling you to buy, sell or hold, um, but that, that would have been a very easy uh, way to reload cheaper or uh, to fight the FOMO and then reload cheaper, right? We also had this uptrend using the real candle bodies that broke. And then as soon as we lo lost that, we lost the higher low every day pattern for the last nine days. Plus we lost the support trend line. Even if you just exited there, that would have saved yourself 22% of downside, right? So, and again, if you're not a chartist, if you don't, if you're not a technical analyst and you don't really care to learn this stuff, you don't have to, you can always join powgroup.ca or pursuitofwealthgroup.com. Uh, we have one week free trial. There's a limited available uh, spots left. I think there's only three or four spots before that's gonna be maxed out. We usually add some here and there, but you know, you can join a group where we have tons of experienced uh, people who uh, are into this and you have to know how to chart because you don't have access to our group, right? So again, it's just a place to bounce ideas off of before you hit the buy and sell button, but we're looking extremely bearish at the moment. And again, on the weekly time frame, we knew to be skeptical of bulls because we had the low, high, higher, low and higher high, which was great, right? We confirmed that weekly uptrend, but then we had no weekly support all the way down to 45 cents from the high there at about 90 cents, right? 89.14 cents. So we knew to be expecting a pullback. SPY started to pull back. Bitcoin started to pull back. Bitcoin's been leading the broader markets. We usually see Bitcoin go first and then the S&P 500. And MJ has been very correlated to the S&P 500. So just watching what SPY does and the S&P 500 does, usually MJ follows, especially to the downside. Uh, not so much on the upside, it hasn't been correlated as much, but correlations come and go, and that's just what I've noticed. And then another clue was that Tilray hadn't changed its weekly trend either. We were, we were just coming off the low. We broke the weekly downtrend with the break there of 748 resistance. Once we broke that, there was no longer a weekly downtrend, but we didn't have a weekly uptrend confirmed. We were just coming straight off the low to the high. We didn't have a higher low like we have now followed by a higher high, right? Like, uh, like SNDL did. So we had the low high, we're just looking for a higher low compared to 478. And then if we hold that from here and break 908, that's gonna confirm a weekly uptrend. And the more names, right, that have weekly uptrends, the better. We'll look at the uh, HMMJ ETF, right? We're still not really, this, this move's all coming off a new low. So we still have to break resistance here at 618 to confirm a weekly uptrend. If that happens, then we say, okay, well, we need the whole sector, right? I'm not even really concerned about earnings, to be honest. I'm waiting, I'm just keeping it simple. As soon as we confirm weekly uptrends across the whole sector, I'll be interested. You know, I'll be a lot more, I'll pay attention a lot more, but as, as of right now, I'm just, I've got my, my bags packed. I've been dollar cost averaging. Um, granted, everything dropped a lot more than I expected, but again, I kept cash on the side. I also had a short position on the S&P 500. And when we had that 13% uh, correction on, on SPY, I was able to, to cover those shorts and then buy a bit more MJ dollar cost average with those profits. So I was hedging, right? And uh, and if you and if you don't have a plan or if you don't have any cash left, well, maybe that's a lesson for next time, right? Or maybe you didn't use the dollar cost averaging and the DCA approach, right? Uh, so these are all things we can learn for next time. But then we zoom out to MSOS and we say, okay, is the MSOS ETF that tracks all the major US companies confirming a weekly uptrend? And if the answer is yes, then we zoom out to the monthly and then we need to confirm monthly uptrends. We know that we're not gonna be going back to 52 week highs on any of these names until we have monthly uptrends confirmed and, and weeklies. Weekly is, is, 
is absolutely uh, necessary at this point, right? So again, just keeping it simple, keep, just looking at the weekly time frame. If we confirm weekly uptrends, then we need monthly uptrends. But until weekly uptrends confirm, you know, I'm not worried about earnings because even if it has a positive reaction, it's just going to get brought down again, just like Tilray, right? It had a positive reaction to earnings in the in the positive EPS, but then because the whole sector was bearish and and the broader markets, buy was dropping, we started to drop. Uh, and, and it didn't confirm a weekly uptrend. And because SNDL confirmed a weekly uptrend, but we were skeptical because a lot of our other names hadn't yet, right? So it was just major warning signs that we had to be aware of. We're also losing the 10 week moving average there at 58 cents. So we'll wanna see a close above that here by the, well, actually we, we just closed this candle for the week. So that's not looking good. Uh, the MACD still hasn't had a bear cross, but the, the stochastic already crossing bear it's not looking good. I think we could test uh, 50 cents, if not, maybe even see a flush of it and uh, trigger some stop losses. In terms of the daily moving averages, though, uh, again, we're below all of them. Again, we lost the 50 day moving average, tried to confirm it as support. We closed below it and at the low of the day, that is not good. So I could easily see us testing that 50 cent. After 50 cents, we have support at 45 cents, um, but I could easily see us within that 50 to 45 cent range into next week, especially if we see the S&P 500 week. But Again, closing underneath those those uh, moving averages and the 50 day after trying to hold it as support, not looking good. Uh, we do have the, the 50 day curling, though, and it's getting, you know, extremely close to notably close to the 200 day moving average, which means we could see a golden cross. That's what we we refer to as a golden cross when the 50 day moving average is crosses through the 200 day moving average. So things are, are heating up. And like I said, with that news of the U.S. bipartisan support, uh, we have multiple bills. We know Chuck Schumer. We know that Amazon and Apple are backing full-blown legalization as well. Uh, things are heating up in the sector. And I think that over the next few months, we're going to see uh, a huge turnaround. And like I said, it's just a matter of when, not if uh, legalization happens in the U.S. Let me know in the comments below your thoughts and opinions. Going to end it there, though. If you could smash like, subscribe to the channel on your way out, I would appreciate it. And as always, we'll see you again in the next video.